Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will uh, graph the cotangent function and uh, all the related to this particular issue um, items we will consider. So cotangent, uh, you know the definition of the cotangent is uh, cosine, oops, that's the wrong one. That's cosine divided by sine. And uh, I do have a few different problems related to graph of this particular function. All right, so let's start. Function is odd or even. Well, function is definitely odd because cosine is even, sine is odd, which means sine changes the sign if argument changes the sign. The cosine doesn't. So the ratio obviously changes the sign. Now, is there any symmetry? Well, um, cosine is a, a even function and it's symmetrical relative to um, the vertical y-axis. Sine is odd and therefore it's uh, centrally symmetrical. So the result would be obviously the centrally symmetrical graph. Um, now, does it have zero points? Yes, when cosine is equal to zero, which is uh, pi over two uh, plus pi plus two pi, etc. Uh, asymptotes, yes, asymptotes exist when sine is equal to zero, which is zero, pi, two pi, etc. And finally, maximum and minimum. No, they do not have, this function does not have maximum and minimum because it goes to either minus infinity to, or plus infinity when the sign goes closer to zero, right near the asymptote. So, let's draw the graphs. The first one is y is equal to cotangent of minus x. Now, in the previous lectures, which were dedicated to other trigonometric functions, and in the general lecture about functions and their graphs, I was talking about the graph of this function. Basically, we can generalize these two functions. If the point AB, let's say, belongs to this graph, then point minus AB belongs to this graph. Because obviously if you uh, substitute minus A into the X, you would have same as if you substitute A into this function. So these two points are symmetrical relative to the Y axis, because the ordinate is the same, B, but the abscissa is changing the sign. So basically the graphs are symmetrical relative to the Y axis. For every point of the graph of this graph, there is a point uh, symmetrical uh, relative to the y-axis in this graph. So if I know the graph of the cotangent, I will know the, function, uh, the graph of the cotangent of minus x just by symmetrically reflecting it relatively to the y-axis. So let me start from the cotangent. Now, the asymptotes are obviously where sine is equal to 0, which is 0, pi, 2 pi. So these are asymptotes. Now, right near 0, this um, denominator is almost 0, right? just a little bit on the positive side. And cosine is equal to 1 uh, at point x equals to 0. So if I would divide 1 into a very small positive number, I will have a very large positive number. So this is how it goes. Then at point pi over 2, when the cosine is equal to 0 and sine is equal to 1, 
the cotangent is uh, obviously zero, and then it continues to minus infinity as the sine um, approaches to pi, because um, the cosine turns negative after the pi over two. And then everything goes symmetrical by period. So now, if I want to, let me continue this periodicity to the left as well. OK. So if I want to reflect this graph relative to the y-axis, what will I have? Well, obviously, I will have this. So these red curves represent graph of y is equal to cotangent of minus x. Good. Now, let's wipe out this. So I don't have to draw again the cotangent. And we will go to the next problem. And the next problem is cotangent of 3x. Okay, now, again, from the previous lectures about other trigonometric functions and from the general lecture about the graph of the functions per se, um, when you multiply an argument by, like, let's say, 3 in this particular case, what happens with the graph? Well, the answer is the graph is squeezed in horizontally towards the vertical y-axis by the factor of 3. So if you multiply by 3, graph is squeezing by 3 times. Why? Very simple explanation. If you have two functions, y is equal to f of x, and there is a point a, b, which belongs to this particular graph, and then you have f of 3x, then obviously 1 third a, b, belongs to this graph. Why? Well, if you substitute one third a into the x, that multiplied by three would be a. So an f of a, as we know, is b because a b belongs. So that would be the true equality. So if point a b belongs to the original graph, point one third a comma b, which is the same b, the same uh, ordinate, the same y-axis coordinate but the x uh, coordinate is squeezed by 3 times. So the whole graph will squeeze in, which means that these asymptotes would not be at 0 pi, 2 pi, or minus pi, and minus 2 pi. They would be corresponding with 3 times narrower, which means I will have here asymptote as at pi over 3. And instead of 2 pi, I will have 2 pi over 3, which is somewhere here. And the graph would be exactly like this in shape, but squeezed in. So let me just do it this way. So it's closer, asymptotically closing to uh, the left uh, asymptote on the top and to the right asymptote on the bottom. Same thing here. Starts here, goes in the middle, and goes here. And obviously repeated after every p divided by 3 period, because the period of this function is now p over 3, not, uh, not, 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 not pi. Again, p and pi I'm mixing together 
One is Greek and the other is English. So, um, okay, that's it basically. The graph is squeezed in. Next. Now I will have to wipe it out because it's too much. Now here and here we will have different numbers. We will have one third. And here we will have also one third. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that instead of one third A, I should put here three A. Because now, if I substitute 3a into the x, then I will have basically the equality, which means if point a, b belongs to original graph, point 3a, b, which is three times stretched further from the middle point, positive are going to the right, negative are going to the left. Everything is stretched horizontally from the central point, from the y-axis, left and right. So. The graph, again, it's very easy to, uh, to put it together. If you have a regional graph, which is pi to pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So, a regional graph is like this. Right? Now, my new graph would be stretched three times from the point zero. This is my zero. This is my y axis. And this is my x axis. Now, period used to be pi. Now the period will be 3 pi. So this would be my first asymptote. And at 6 pi, would be my next asymptote, because this 2 pi point would stretch 3 times to 6 point, to 6 pi, right? So that would be my next asymptote. So the graph would look exactly like this, as far as the shape is concerned, but stretch 3 times, which means, again, on the left it's closer uh, to, to the plus infinity, and on the right, so it's somewhere here. It's like this. So that would be my graph. And obviously repeat it with a period equal to 3 pi, because this is the period. 3 pi repeated left and right. All right. Fine. That's done. equal to 3 cotangent of x. So now I'm multiplying the function, not the argument. Well, again, from the previous lectures about trigonometric functions and uh, from general functions and their graphs, you know that this is a vertical stretch. Well, stretch or squeeze depending on this particular uh, coefficient. 3 means stretch. So Whenever, again, let me get back to my general functions. If you have general function f of x and the point a, b belongs to this particular graph, which means b is equal to f of a, then if you have the graph this, then obviously a 3b belongs to this graph. Why? Well, let's substitute. a, it will be f of a. f of a we know equals to uh, b, so it would be 3b, and y is equal to 3b. So for each, for each function, for, for each point a, b, which belongs to this graph, the point which is uh, which has coordinates a, 3b, which is 
three times uh, uh, larger the, the ordinate, the y, the y coordinate, uh, belongs to this graph. So everything seems to be like stretching uh, in a vertical direction. From zero uh, up, it would be stretching up. From zero down, it would be stretching down, because the positive numbers are multiplied by three and negative are multiplied by the same three. So it goes further from zero. And now, um, about the graph. So let me start again. I will do it only on one particular period, because the period is exactly the same. So my original graph seems to be like this. Now my new graph would be stretched three times, which means every ordinate is tripled. So it's something like this. Whatever it was here, it's three times more here. So that's what means stretching three times. Obviously, if this um, coefficient is uh, less than one, let's say it's one half, it would be squeezing. But anyway, every ordinate is multiplied by this particular factor. Okay. Next. Cotangent of pi over two minus x. Okay, the way to approach problems like this, the easiest way is the following. From the general um, uh, uh, function theory, you know that if you have a graph of function and the point in this graph, then you have a graph of this function, well, I shouldn't use the same letter A, plus some constant C would be a minus c b, right? Because if you will substitute a minus c instead of x, you would have uh, a minus c plus c, which is a, and you know that f of a is b, so this would be equality. And this means what? This means that the point which is c item c units to the left from the original a b. So the whole graph is shifted by c to the left for, for positive c. Obviously, if c is negative, then it's to the right. So we will use this. But it's not exactly like what, what we have here, right? What we have here is minus x here. And here we have x with plus. But now we know that um, uh, the function, we know the graph of the function cotangents of minus x. It's already been done. It's symmetrical relative to the y-axis uh, to the original. So I will convert this into cotangent of minus x minus pi over 2. Minus x, minus and minus would be plus. So that's the same thing. So if I will start from cotangent of minus x, then I can use this particular principle. So let me start from the cotangent of minus x. And we already know what that actually is. So original, now this is pi. And this is minus pi. And we know that the original cotangent is like this. So symmetrical, I was already saying, is like this. Oops. That's wrong. Too much. something like this. Um, so that's original, that's cotangent of minus x. Now I have to subtract pi over 2 from the argument. And from this principle, it goes, well, in this case, since this is negative, it goes to the right by pi over 2. 
So whatever asymptotes were, and they were at zero pi or minus pi, the asymptotes will shift together with the graph. So the new asymptotes would be at pi over two, which is in the middle of this, and minus pi over two, and three pi over two. But the graph basically will remain the same in between these asymptotes. So it would be like this. So my new graph is black, something like this. So it goes from um, the black one. So it's minus pi over 2. This is pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. So that's where new asymptotes will be. And the black represents this function, the graph of this function. OK, done. Complicated. Y is equal to minus one third cotangent of minus three x minus three pi over two. Okay, what should we do with this? Well, again, let's just um, transform this into something a little bit more palatable, which is minus one-third cotangent, well, it's, it's not working, minus three x plus pi over 2, right? So what are the steps? Well, steps are like this. First, we will do cotangent of x. That's original, right? From this, we will do cotangent of minus 3 x. Now, what does this mean? It means that we are using the minus, which means we are reflecting relative to the y-axis, as we know, but we also are multiplying argument by 3, which means the graph would be squeezed by 3 times. And again, we already had this. This is just a combination of whatever it was before. Next would be cotangent of minus 3x plus pi over 2, which means we will shift the whole graph by minus pi over 2, which means pi over, pi over 2 to the left. And finally, we will multiply it by one third, which means we will squeeze it vertically three times. So that's the plan, right? So I think the best thing if you are working with functions like tangent or cotangent, to work around uh, asymptotes. So you know that basically the cotangent is like this relative to the asymptotes, right? Now, if you multiply it by minus 3, it would be symmetrical relative to the uh, y-axis, which means instead of this, you will have this, and this would be minus pi, and this is 0, this is pi, and obviously repeat it. Now, since you are multiplying by factor, now this is uh, a cotangent of minus x, but now we have to multiply argument by 3, which means we will squeeze it, so instead of pi, this actually would be pi over 3, 
and this would be pi over 3. And this is 0. Because it's squeezed in. So instead of 0 pi, it would be 0 pi over 3. Now we will shift it by minus pi over 2, which means pi over 2 to the left. So 0 would become, would, would become minus pi over 2, and minus pi over 3, if we shift it to the left, pi over 3 plus pi over 2 would be what? Uh, it's uh, 2, 5, six, five, five over 6, right? So it's somewhere right here. Minus 5 pi over 6. So this would be our second. And the graph would be between them. So this is right now from minus pi over five pi over six to minus pi over two is our um, periodicity. And obviously we can repeat these particular asymptotes every pi over three times. So the next one would be minus pi over pi over 2 minus pi over 3, that's pi over 6, right? So that would be my next. And plus pi over 2, that's uh, oh, pi over 2 minus pi over 6, it's pi over 3. Next is pi over 3. So this is my next. So anyway, you understand how to basically calculate this particular period. Oh, no, not pi, pi, over, three, pi over 3. Uh, it's not pi over 3, it's uh, pi over pi over 6, yes, pi over 6, plus pi over 6, because the, um, the, uh, the period is pi over 3, right? So from minus pi over pi, 5 pi over 6 to minus pi over 2, from minus pi over 2 to pi, minus pi over 6, minus pi over 6 to plus pi over 6, etc. So that's how it looks. This is y-axis in the middle, and this is the graph. So, key points are minus 5 pi over 6, minus pi over 2, minus pi over 6, pi over 6, etc. with a period of pi over 3. And the only thing we have to add right now is multiply graph by one third, which means it will be flatter, if you wish. So instead of this, it would be, let me get another color, it would be this. It's flatter, closer to the x-axis. So that's the graph. What's the... What's the lesson of this thing? We can build the graph step by step, transforming our original graph into whatever we need uh, using the methodology which we know. I mean, multiply something, uh, but multiply by something, uh, an argument, or multiply a function by something, or add to argument, etc. So we know these simple manipulations, and from these simple manipulations, we, we combine them together to get to the real graph. Okay, we have two more problems. Uh, these problems are related to addition of the graphs. So y is equal to cotangent of 2x plus cotangent of minus x. All right. So, let's think about it. The periodicity is pi, obviously, because the periodicity of cotangent is pi. Now, this is, as you know, a squeezed uh, cotangent function, um, squeezed horizontally towards the y-axis, so its period is actually pi over 2. So, what we have to consider is every like pi over 2 
uh, points on on the on the surface. So it's pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, minus pi over two, minus pi, etc. Zero, y, x. Now these are asymptotes for cotangent of minus x. These are on the pi boundary. And it's cotangent of minus x, which means it goes this way. have to put cotangent of 2x. Well, 2x has a period of pi over 2, which means these would be asymptotes on every pi over 2 point. So the asymptotes would be here, so the graph would be not easy. Etc. Now we have to add them together. Well, obviously we have to consider these points. These are key points. So what happens at points, well, 0, pi over 2, pi, etc. Well, obviously these are asymptotes. You can't deny that. Now, um, how the function behaves in between? Well, that's not such an easy question, obviously. But let's try. Well, let's approach from left to right. We approach 0. Both graphs are, are going to plus infinity. So obviously, here, the function, uh, which is sum of these, Oh, wait a moment. I think I made a mistake. These are cosine of 2x, not x, which means the direction would be different. My mistake. Direction would be... This way. All right. Now let's sum them together. This is not easy because as we approach zero from the left, one function goes to plus infinity, another goes to mi 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 minus infinity. Now, which one is bigger? Which one will, which infinity is stronger? Well, um, well, let's just think about it. This one is squeezed in function cotangent of x. As we squeeze it in, it seems to be steeper, right? So this one is steeper than this one, which means the ultimate result would be minus infinity. And in this case, when one of the functions is 0 and another is plus infinity, obviously would be a result of the plus infinity. And it will cross somewhere in between. That's what I believe would be in this particular case. Now, in this particular case, again, this is as steeper than this, because this one is a squeezed in. So, in this case, infinity will be on this side, and eventually it goes to the negative infinity, because one of them is minus infinity, and this one is zero, right? So, this one goes 
this way. Well, basically that's it, because after that, it repeats itself. After that, it's a period, so it will be something like this. So it will resemble, actually, the cotangent of 2x, more or less. I mean, obviously, it will cross the x-axis in different uh, positions, etc. But as far as the shape is concerned, as far as asymptotes are concerned, it will behave more or less like, like this function. That's how it looks. I think I'm right. If not, well, correct. And uh, one more, last task. It's also on summation of two graphs. One is cotangent of x and another is x plus pi over 2. Well, so if before we had more or less uh, the same um, uh, points where the function takes the, uh, the function has uh, um, asymptotes, now the asymptotes will be shifted, right? One of them will be from 0 to pi, that's the cotangent of x, and another would be shifted by pi over 2 to the left, which means it would be from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. So, well, let's put pi. So this is my one function. I'll use it like this. And another function is like this. So what will be on this particular case. Now, uh, I will continue here and here. So that's, that's how we will go. So it's one curve which belongs to one graph and another belongs to another, and then again, one and again, and again another. How we should add them up? Well, obviously, it will be uh, an asymptote on every pi over 2 uh, boundary, right? So, let's do it from 0 to the right, let's say. One function is 0, another is plus infinity, and when we move to pi over 2, it will be here. So, it's something like this would be the combination. Same thing here. This is 0, this is plus infinity, so it goes this way, and then to minus infinity, and same thing here, and same thing here. So this is a function which seems to be periodic on a period of pi over 2, and within each period, again, it looks more or less like a cotangent. It's just slightly different in, in shape, but in principle it goes along the same type of curve. Okay, basically that's all I wanted to show today. Thank you very much. And um, we have two more lectures about the graphs, secant and uh, cosecant. Uh, good luck.